We are well into 2024, and if you are in a career rut or a job funk, then you need to start taking the steps to get yourself to a better place. This video is for those of you who have crazy ambitions for your career. It is for those of you who don't want to settle for feeling like this anymore. And it's for those of you who know you have more to give, more to create, more impact to have. You just know you should be doing something more and bigger than what you are at the moment. A career, by the way, doesn't mean a nine to five. It doesn't mean climbing a corporate ladder or any ladder, in fact. A career is what it means to you and it can be made up of a portfolio of things that you are doing at the moment or you aspire to do over the lifetime of your career. But your career can most definitely include a nine to five or an eight to six. It can include your side hustles. It can include exploring new ideas, exploring new business connections, or even just new learning and skill development. Now I felt very compelled to make this video and I feel like this could be one of the most important videos I've made to date. And that's for two reasons. One is because of my own personal story with navigating a major career rut last year. And second is a lack of tangible and actionable steps to actually get yourself out of a career rut. I feel like there are a lot of resources on the internet that talk about getting out of some kind of rut, but they all lack the depth and substance around the practical, actionable steps that you can take walking away from that video or that podcast to actually get there. Because think about it, when you are feeling low, when you are motivated, when you are in a period of feeling uninspired, you're in a period of just feeling really lost. The hardest thing is to figure out what is that first next thing that I should do. You feel so deep in it that even the smallest action that you think of doesn't feel like it's going to have any meaningful value. And having a clear guide or a clear plan or a series of steps that have been laid out for you or you can see a series of steps that someone else took to get out of a similar boat is really helpful. And that's something I really struggled to find last year. And so I did watch a lot of videos about getting out of a rut and they all had this one thing in common, which was that they all validated how you are feeling. I felt very validated when I watched these videos. It made me sink even more into my feeling of I'm not in a good place. And I felt okay doing that because all of these videos were validating that that is totally fine. That is totally normal. And while it is, I don't want to take that approach with this video. This video is going to be the opposite in that I want it to light a fire under you to actually get up at the end of this video, comment below what is that one thing you are going to do. It doesn't matter how small it is. Before we get deeper into this, I want to share my own personal experience of a major career rut, which I experienced in 2023. But 2023, in fact, marked the lowest point of my career in terms of how I was feeling, how misaligned I actually felt and was to what I actually wanted to do, which I didn't realize until I was actually in it. I was successfully moving up. I was, I was taking on more responsibility. I was managing people. I was earning more. And in fact, my side hustles were really starting to blossom, but there was a lot of that, which I didn't enjoy. I hated a lot of what I was doing. I went through periods of sulking, being the victim, crying, up and down emotions. I had plenty days where I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning. I had Sunday scaries and all of these things also flowed through to the rest of my life. They were career and job related, but with that being such a big part of life, it really stemmed through to so many other aspects of my life. My confidence was on the floor and I felt like I just wasn't me anymore. Now, no one likes going through any of this. So I do want to remind you that blips like this, and I'm calling it a blip in the grand scheme of your career, is maybe somewhat healthy because it really forces you to reflect. And again, in the grand scheme of things, six months, 12 months, or however long it might be, hopefully won't feel that significant, especially if you can get a positive outcome from this experience. But at the time, and my own personal experience was that I was questioning everything. I was questioning the entire past of my career and the entire future that at the time I thought I had. But somehow I decided that enough was enough and I decided to actually do something about it. And that's when I started watching those videos and really getting into resources to see how have others got out of this? What are experts saying around how to navigate this sort of period in your life? And I guess over the course of many, many months, I ended up curating my own set of steps, which I only realized 
looking back at the start of this year, I realized I had done so many small things that had built up to me crawling slowly out of this rut that I was in. But when I was in it, I really didn't know what the next six months was going to look like. All I decided to do that one day, and I don't remember when that one day was, is I decided to do something. And I'm gonna share with you all of the some things that I did do. This video is intended to inspire you and also to remind you that while low periods of motivation and career ruts and funks are normal, you need to leverage those times and push through, build the momentum and the motivation and fuel yourself to potentially redesign your entire career and your entire life. Because the opportunity you have when you are not in a good place has the potential to really redefine because you feel so unsatisfied and so unfulfilled with where you are at that why would you stay in that place? And why not use that place to actually get yourself to a much, much better place rather than just temporarily fixing where you're at at the moment. Now, the rest of this video is going to focus on the actual steps that you can take to get yourself to a better place. I have split up these steps into six different categories, which you can see on the screen here. And feel free to skip ahead to a particular category if one seems more relevant or enticing to you. But I highly recommend you watch them all and then you can pick and choose which ones you want to start with. Now, let's kick it off with category number one. And the steps in this are related to deeply reflect and analyze. Now, this might sound like an obvious one. But if you do not know what your current state really truly is, if you cannot get brutally honest with yourself, you are going to be at risk of repeating this pattern again. Because what can happen is rather than running to something amazing because you've found a great opportunity to go to, you might end up thinking something's great because it looks better than where you are now. And in that scenario, you are actually just running away from the thing that you don't like rather than purely running to something that is better for you. So if you don't reflect properly on your current situation, how can you best design your future situation? Now, reflecting is not about sulking. It's not about being the victim. Think of it as a data point, you are collecting an insight from your past experiences and whatever situation you might be in now to baseline yourself and make sure you do not get to this place again. And a lot of that is yes, reflecting on how you are feeling at the moment, but it is also thinking about the steps that you may have taken to get there. Now, how you reflect is completely up to you, but I strongly recommend writing it down. And this is coming from someone, by the way, who is not a natural writer at all. So I feel you if you think that is creating a barrier or you, you don't want to write and you just want to think about it. But the risk with just thinking about it is that it just, we live in our heads so much already, especially when we are not in a great place. And trust me, the exercise of purely getting it out of your head onto paper will alleviate a world of stress from your shoulders and noise from your brain. So now I'm going to share with you a list of questions that you can ref use for reflection or ask yourself. A lot of them are focused on positive and moving forward, but even that is a part of reflection. So here are some questions you can reflect. What exactly about your current situation is not working? And this is being specific. You have to be absolutely ruthless with yourself and you have to be honest about what is it that is not working. Secondly, what do you want to do? And do you know what you want to do? Because maybe you're feeling worse about your current situation if you don't love it, because you don't know what else it is that you could do. And that is something you need to acknowledge because the longer you put off not figuring out what it is that you should do next, doesn't have to be your life's passion or anything, but something else that you should do so you don't get into this place again, you need to acknowledge that so you can create the series of steps to get to figuring that out. Next, what are the patterns that excite you and give you energy? Truly think about the things that you do. And when you do them, you have little little sparks going off inside you. And when you do that thing, you want to do more of that thing. That's how I think about energy. It's like you do something and it kind of fuels you. So you want to do more of it and you want to do more of it. What is that thing? Big or small, it doesn't matter. But what are the things that, even if you don't do them at the moment, the things that you think could give you energy? Write those down. Next, what on a daily or weekly basis do you look forward to? I think this is really important to consider, especially with activities outside of work, because not everyone needs to and wants to find fulfillment in work. Even if you figure out what it is that fulfills you or you look forward to outside of work, we focus so much on what's not working. And all you need to do is find these little things that are positives. So reflect on that. Next, what did you enjoy as a kid at school or at university? 
Do you do any of those things still or have you stopped doing them? There are so many things that we do when we're kids, creative things often as well, that we just stop doing when we're adults. For me personally, it was swimming. I used to swim when I was a kid and then one day I stopped swimming and I have no idea why. Drawing was another one for me. I used to paint, I used to draw uh, anime in fact, and then I stopped and I have absolutely no idea why. But even to this day, I have, I, I know where a lot of my creativity comes from even if I'm, I'm putting it in things like videos or short form content, I always had it. I just stopped it and I suppressed it. And it's really interesting how we do suppress these things that really naturally came to us when we were kids. And I have read some really interesting research on when you are feeling lost in life, go back to the thing that you naturally did when you were a child, because that might give you a small inclination as to what you might still enjoy now. But when you go through school, university, you have jobs, you get responsibilities, and you just forget about those things that you love doing for absolutely no reason when you were a kid. Now, here are some questions to ask yourself when you are reflecting. Ask yourself what it is about your current situation that is not working. And I want you to try and figure out why it is also not working. So write down, I am feeling X. I am feeling Y. I am feeling ABC. Just write a laundry list of what you are feeling. And then in a separate section, write down why you think you are feeling that way. And I think it's good to just make some assumptions yourself. And it'll be really interesting to look back on and see if you were right. And I'm going to share my ones with you shortly. Then I want you to write down what is in my control. Because often, I guess we feel helpless when we're in a position like this. We, we feel really helpless. But the reality is that there will be really small things, maybe sometimes bigger things that are in your control and you just haven't identified them. So write down what is in my control. What do you want to do, right? That's a, that's a loaded question and I think you'll either know or you won't know. And if you say you don't know, that's a good thing because then you can create the series of steps to figure that out. What on a daily or weekly basis do you look forward to? So there's things that give you energy, right? There's like things that you want to do and they fuel you. And so you want to keep doing them. It's like little sparks inside you. And then there's just like general life things that you love doing. It could be as simple as walking down to your cafe and getting a coffee. Thinking about the things that give you energy could be an interesting insight into like the type of work you might want to do, or I don't know, maybe it's side projects you should dabble in to start fulfilling yourself. Do you have hobbies that give you energy or take your energy? So for example, are you playing sports? Are you working out? Or are you going out and drinking and partying? Because yes, that might feel good in the moment. It might be your coping mechanism, but really it's further detracting from your situation and draining you. And then lastly, what did you enjoy as a kid at school or at university? Do you still do those things or have you stopped doing them? So that is deeply reflecting and analyzing. And you don't have to just do this once. You definitely need to do it to start this whole process, but you can come back and do it. You can read your reflections uh, periodically and that'll really show you how much progress you've made. Because when I read my reflections now from, I think it was July or August, 2023, I feel like I'm reading a different person. And that just shows that on the steps I've taken have worked. And secondly, I've just, I've come a long way from this hole that I was in. Category number two is career coaching. Now, this isn't something that will be within the means of everyone, and I completely recognize that. So I'll do my best to share some alternative uh, options. But this step is really intended to help you gain the perspective of someone that you otherwise might not. Talking to your friends and your family when you are in a deep career rut isn't often the most helpful thing because our friends and family will tend to validate how we're feeling, take a bit more of an emotional support role, but just having another channel by which you can offload and kind of further analyze how you are feeling and the path that you can take to get out of it, you need someone objective, you need someone external. So if you already have a therapist, maybe it's that person. I specifically myself wanted to focus on someone more career focused, someone who specialized in helping people navigate challenges within the, I guess kind of like the confines of their job slash their career. That was really what I wanted. I didn't want to cross that boundary into like therapist overall. And if you are currently working in a company, then I know at least in Australia and in New Zealand, a lot of companies offer employee assistant programs. And so maybe that is something to explore as well, but there will be options available, but I want you to consider getting a third party perspective because it can also be like the check that you need it, right? Your friends and family often aren't going to deliver the hard 
hearing information that you need. I wanted to just share some exercises that I had done with my career coach in particular that helped me. And maybe these are things you can do yourself until you're able to maybe find the right external person to talk to. So some exercises we did together were writing down the things that I was perceiving of my situation. Now this is gonna depend on your situation, but for me personally, I, like I said, I had a big dip in my confidence. I had a significant amount of imposter syndrome and I was really not enjoying just this general domain context of, uh, for me personally, like the role that I was in. And therefore I, I created a lot of assumptions in my head around how others were perceiving how I was performing. And that really started to impact me, but I didn't realize that I had created all of those things myself in my head because I got to such a bad place with it. So my career coach and I did an exercise whereby she asked me a few different prompts and I tried to write down the things that I believed others thought about me. And the way that we navigated these prompts allowed me to actually get to a point where I realized all of these things I've written down, I have no evidence that anyone thinks these about me. I have no, they've never told me that they do. Um, And basically it showed me that I had crafted these in my head through a series of events and actions. So that was a really eye-opening exercise for me because it allowed me to really focus on my own internal thoughts rather than at that time, I was very externally focused. Um, Another thing we did is we developed little toolkits for me. So whatever, I had like lots of little challenges I was dealing with and we would together brainstorm when I, you know, between the coaching sessions that I had, if I hit a challenging com- uh, scenario, these are the things that I could do in that moment to navigate that. And that was really helpful because I kind of just had a little, I guess, toolkit, little tool belt of these are the things I can pull out rather than how I had been navigating it leading up to the point of having a career coach, which was really not dealing with anything at all. Another thing we we did was held me accountable. So this really goes with the idea of creating steps and getting a plan together to get out of my career rut. But we came up with lots of small things along the way that I was going to do. And it's easy to not do them, but having someone hold me accountable. And again, I don't think this can be family or friends was instrumental. And I had a milestone and I looked forward to sharing my progress, which by the way, progress first went down. Like I got deeper into a hole with my rut because I really had to acknowledge and confront how I was feeling. But then I got to a place where my accountability really progressed me. And then last but not least, amongst some many other things, we did, we understood behaviors and why they existed. Oftentimes we do things that don't make sense to us. And then when you reflect on them, you realize you're acting a certain way, or maybe you're in, you're, you're in in action mode. You're not doing anything. You're not doing enough to get yourself out of this, but you're kind of doing it to protect yourself. And rather than being hard on yourself about it, you realize why you are that way. And I think again, just understanding how you are operating and the behaviors that are coming with whatever scenario you are in is just incredibly helpful because it kind of shifts the blame off you when you understand that how you might be behaving is actually completely normal. Um, And yeah, just getting a career coach or a, I don't think mentor is quite the right person. I think a mentor would typically guide you through different scenarios that you're navigating in an actual professional role. Whereas a coach is quite what it sounds like. It's almost like like a, a career therapist. It's not technically, but that's the best way that I can elaborate on it. There are many more activities that someone external can do with you, but I think having someone that is outside of the context of the situation you are dealing with, outside of your close friends and family relationship is going to be really important. So see what options you have available, see what you can tap into that is gonna be inexpensive. And if you cannot do that, then obviously everyone has their own circumstance. Just consider doing some of the the exercises that I shared and yeah, see if over time you are able to find someone who can fill that kind of role for you. Category three is to hack your mindset. And mindset throughout all all of the challenges you will go through when you are in a career rut is paramount, right? You need to get on top of your mindset in order to get out of this. Before you can practically and physically get out of whatever situation you are in, you need to mentally build the strength and mentally get out of it. So hacking your mindset really became a superpower for me during my career rut. And I wanna share with you some of the things that I did and really how I started using my mindset to work for me and how I was able to take my mindset from a place of negativity and uh, lack and really just 
no confidence at all to a place where I felt like I could use it to empower myself. When I was navigating my career rut and I was in survival mode in my nine to five, every uh, scenario or interaction or task that I had to do that was a challenge for me, challenge in that I really wasn't enjoying doing it, it drained me, I use it as character development. I told myself that everything that I was struggling with, task, interaction, whatever it was, was character development. I was going to learn something about at least myself in doing that thing. So if I had to, for example, run a really challenging meeting, and for me, because I felt so misaligned with what I was doing, I honestly could not care less. I had to put on a facade in order to really fight for my product when I was beyond the point of caring. You do get to a point where you're beyond the point of caring, but it's within your best interest to use it for something, right? And I think I got got really good at hacking my mindset to get the most out of a situation for me. So leverage, I think, is another big one. And earlier when I said, if you can go into every situation, task, interaction, thinking about how you can get something out of that for you, think that is going to, over time, help your mindset because you're using that interaction, that task as a tool for yourself. Other thing I did is I started writing down the things I was learning. Because again, when you're in a rut, you know, learning is probably one of the last things you care about, but it's a little hit of dopamine. And so I started keeping a list of today I learned, today I learned. And these things could be work-related or not work-related. Uh, it really didn't matter. It was, I learned this thing today. And guess what? That's something I did not know yesterday. So I am 0.1% better than I was yesterday. And over time, I started learning bigger things and more interesting things. And I started connecting the dots between different things that I learned. I then started going out of my way to like read stuff and watch videos and listen to podcasts that further fueled my ability to learn things. And then before I knew it, I had a laundry list of things that I had learned in this period of time where I was feeling absolutely terrible about myself. So do something as small as that. Create a uh, a note on your phone Simple as that and just write down one thing every single day. Make a reminder on your calendar and it's a little hit of dopamine that over time is going to have an un, like an, a surprising impact on your mindset. Another thing I did is I started dressing better when working from home. So, so in my reflection, I had got to a, a realization which was maybe I'm feeling this way because I work from home all the time. And, you know, in hindsight, that wasn't my problem, but it was a theory that I had at the time. And I, again, decided to be a little bit proactive there and said, okay, I'm going to actually dress better when I work from home because when I dress better, I feel better. When I feel better, I perform better. I interact better and I feel more confident. And so that was one small thing I had in my control, but it has a huge impact on your mindset. When you turn up looking like a slob, (laughs) versus when you turn up looking more powerful you will over time it doesn't work every time or immediately you will feel more powerful but you need to give yourself the chance to feel that way give myself the chance to dress better in order to feel that way and it was a really small thing that it has worked wonders for me and I still work from home full time now and you know actually getting dressed properly in the morning is something I still do because it's a tool I want to carry forward to many many um, more months to come because it's it's done me wonders and there is nothing that it takes away it only adds more to my experience day to day my confidence and I think ultimately might even might even help with my success another thing I did is I had prompts and I had post-its around my apartment I had some on the mirror where I get ready in the morning. I had some in the bathroom. I had some around my monitor at my desk and they were positive reinforcement. Um, Sometimes I would write down something really interesting I had learned. Sometimes I would write down a little kudos for myself, uh, achievement that I had, a reminder of how far I had come, even a reminder of how I wanted to be. And over time, when you see these small things over and over again, it just reminds you that you've grown and it reminds you of the positive things that you can take out of this. And it really reinforces the narrative you have going on in your head. Um, By the way, I know it's getting a bit dark. The sun is setting, but I'm determined to finish this video. So please bear with me. Um, So yeah, hack your mindset, write prompts for yourself, put them everywhere so that the internal dialogue you have isn't the thing you are leaning on all of the time. And even though your your the noise in your head is going to be there, when you walk around, you'll you'll see these little notes, and 
that is still going into your brain. And I promise you over time, you will start believing them. I have always been a fairly confident person and I'm back to being that way now, but I almost couldn't fathom that I had this period of time where almost nothing happened. I was just misaligned with what I was doing. That completely shot my confidence in the ground that I would need to rebuild my confidence from the ground up, which is what I've spent the last eight months doing. And small things like that make a huge difference because your brain is always going to overpower things. It works. Now, category four is to learn from others. This is gonna be a short one because it is as simple as leverage the resources you have available in the form of books, blogs, articles, podcasts, interviews. You have a world of people to learn from at the tip of your fingers. If you are not searching the internet to learn from the stories of others and those who have done it, those who are more experienced than you. They could be business people. They could be those pursuing similar career paths to you. They could be completely unrelated, but give yourself the exposure to do that. I feel like this is a really obvious one. That's why I've made it number four. I think it's it's a missed opportunity and it's a massive opportunity that you can use as a tool Again, it's not just about listening to a random podcast. Do it with the intention of using it as a tool to get yourself out of this place. And I think the whole thing with all the steps I'm sharing here is actually intention. If you have the intention to use all of these steps to crawl out of this place, which you will, then that is the biggest difference between you just just doing them. Because just doing them is, is one thing. But actually listening to that book, listening to that podcast, making notes about it, applying the things that have been mentioned is what's going to make the difference. So I'm going to leave a bunch of resources linked in the comments that really helped me. Some of them are interviews, some of them are books. They relate to various aspects of career and life. But I came across, I stumbled across a lot of these kind of in weird timing as well. And they helped me immensely. I think learning from others in your real life as well. If you know someone who has navigated a career rut or even a life rut, someone who, had made, who has made a career transition, I think is a really good one as well. It talked to them because like I'm doing now, I'm sharing what worked for me. You never know what little nuggets you might pick up from what worked for someone else. The next category is your coping strategy. Now, this isn't as much to do with how you get out of your rut, but more so how you keep yourself afloat while you are still in it and you are slowly progressing yourself to get out of it. Because in reality, that is going to take time and it's not something you want to rush if you want to do it right and get out in the best way possible. Some of these strategies that I had were a more specific to working in a nine to five, since that's where a lot of my career rut and misalignment came from. So you'll have to think about this for yourself. Uh, and I'll also preface that I don't think any of these are mid to long-term solutions. These are things I kind of developed on the fly based on what I desperately needed at the time. They worked for me for a few months while I was really trying to fl stay afloat and I was in survival mode. So first and foremost, I used cal calendar blocking as my sidekick. Calendar blocking saved me and I found a way to basically strategize my week such that I could condense my work into as few hours as possible. So when I say my work, like I still did everything I needed to do, but I tried to condense people interactions since that, that was a huge part of what was taking from me and I was struggling to show up for. I tried to minimize my people interaction time into a couple of days to three days a week. So not possible for everyone. I was pretty in control of my calendar. I had a lot of autonomy. So I would try and keep Mondays and Fridays as meeting free as I possibly could. It didn't always work, but I tried. And so that meant I didn't have five painful days. I only had three painful days. It also meant that I could use Mondays and Fridays or the meetings with, or the days with less meetings to energize myself because I needed it. And if I was spreading myself thin and, and sprinkling interactions and meetings with people throughout the five days, then that was pretty much gonna rule over my entire week. So that worked well for me. Um, the other thing I did was really try to use, really try to achieve any task that I had to do for myself as a very, um, a very tightly time bound thing. So if I had to, I don't know, write a document for something, I treated that like my life depended on it. I created a huge level of urgency by leaving it as late as I possibly could. Again, not a long-term strategy so that I minimize the pain. Like I know this sounds extreme, but this is what sometimes the length you have to go to when you are really doing something 
or in a place where you know what I mean. Like if you're experiencing it, you know what I mean. I can't even really put it into words. I was very fortunate in that I was already working remotely full time. So for me, I tried to set up my day so that I started my days with something that energized me. Now I didn't always do this, but when I learned about starting your day with something that energizes you, it changed the game for me. So rather than waiting until the end of the day when work was over to you know, do some of my side projects or my content, I would start my day that way. And that made me feel fulfilled. It made me feel like I've done that thing that I care about, that I'm passionate about, that I'm aligned with. And now I feel slightly better about going into a full day of something that I'm really struggling with. What I was doing before that is waking up five minutes before a meeting and really trying to minimize the amount of time that I was awake before the workday started. And I flipped that. So it was a bit of a mindset hack as well. I flipped it so that instead I was using that time for myself to grow, to progress the things I cared about career wise. Otherwise, I was even more resentful towards what I was doing for work that the rest of that day because I hadn't given anything to the things that I really wanted to do. And I think this applies to careers and work and balancing it all in general. I had to get very intentional with it. Otherwise it wasn't going to work. So you do have to be intentional. And category number six is to embrace small creative tasks. Now I'm gonna link a video below where a woman who specializes in creative health explains this beautifully. But she basically says that creativity is one of the most un tapped areas of health and well-being. And a lot of what she says, I really resonate with because she says things like when you have a, a list of ideas that have been piling away in the background and you don't act on them, when you're in a rut, which essentially means you're in a dull state, uh, you're unproductive, but it's hard to change. You need to do something creative to get yourself out of that place. She explains it beautifully, but I'll link it below. But essentially getting your creative health up is a way to slowly crawl out of the rut that you are in. So I want to encourage you to think of some ways, and this is going to be personal to each person, that helps you be creative. It could be anything. For some people, being creative might mean playing sports, but for someone else, it could literally mean painting or drawing. So think of what makes you feel creative. It doesn't matter what the physical creative act is, as long as it makes you feel creative and it starts creating, again, little hits of dopamine and little um, feelings of being curious and going to dig into that curiosity, which then refuels you and drives you to keep going further and build that momentum. So some of the things that I did to embrace my creativity and do really small tasks, I am more creative by nature, is one, I actually did research creativity, health and well-being. So the importance of that really made me act on it because if I didn't deem it to be important, I was less likely to act on it because everything is tough when you're in a big rut. Everything is hard work. So having that evidence-based understanding really helped. Secondly, I actually spoke at a startup event so for me, being creative means dabbling in new business ideas, in the startup ecosystem, content creation, blogs, writing, uh, all of that sort of thing. So I ended up volunteering to do a question and answer session at a startup accelerator that I actually used to partake in once before. So it was a chance for me to connect with startup founders. And this was a huge part of the disconnect I had with my given rut is I was working in a big tech company and all I wanted to do was work in a more smaller, creative, innovative, fast moving environment. And I wanted to work with like minded people, which quite honestly, I found most people working in a really big tech environment were not like minded to me. And I put myself in a situation where I connected with people who I felt were like me. They were trailblazers. They had identified a problem. They, had, they were building a solution to solve that problem. They were building businesses. They had taken risks. And it was so inspiring for me. So I put myself out of my comfort zone. It helped me boost a little bit of my confidence, but it also just made me do something that made me feel connected to a part of my career and a part of me that I'd completely suppressed. Another thing I did was worked remotely in another location for a week. So there's a different kind of creativity, right? My partner and I went to Sydney for a week. We planned a fun week of activities in the weekends and in the week weeknights. 
and we booked an Airbnb, we drove up, we drove back, so we did a bit of a road trip in between, and we worked while we were there. And I remember that week, this is in the thick of my rut, I felt amazing. And it was the change in environment. It was a change in routine scenery. It was also having lots of different things to do and look forward to that were different outside of my normal day-to-day life at home. And I highly recommend if you have the opportunity, even if it's for a weekend, to change your environment and see how that can reset you and See how that can re-stimulate you and again, just kind of force you out of this rut that you're in. Something else that I did for myself creativity-wise is I'm a runner, so we actually signed up to a run. Uh, We did a city to surf in Sydney and we signed up to that and we did that at the start of our week away. So it was a great way to, again, get endorphins going, get some dopamine going, feel accomplished because I ran a very difficult 14 kilometer course or very hilly, I should say, not too difficult. Um, And then the rest of the week was enjoying the, that accomplishment. And uh, I, I had suppressed that. I didn't work out frequently anymore last year, which was a big part of my life. And that reminded me that I had let this other really important part of me go. And it wasn't until I did it in this new environment that I, yeah, just kind of felt reset and refueled. So changing your environment and then finding little activities to do with that will go a long way. So that wraps up the six categories of the various steps that I took when I was in my major, major career rut in 2023. They might not sound revolutionary. It also might not sound like a lot, but I promise you that one, when you're in that rut, doing all of these things feels ginormous. It feels like a huge load and it feels like a big barrier to even starting some of these things. But I promise you that once you do, and if you do, even enough of them for an extended period of time that you will reap the benefits of it. And at the very least, you are going to get something out of it far beyond where you are now if you are not doing anything at all. So if I had to leave you with one takeaway from this video, it is do one thing and one thing only. What is that one thing you can do today that is going to make a difference? doesn't matter how big or small it is. I've said that a lot. What is that one thing? Because it's that one thing you need to get right today that is going to help you do that other one thing tomorrow and another one thing the next day. And it's the momentum that you need to get going. And the first step is going to be the hardest. You're going to have ups and downs. But if you don't take that step today, then you're going to be stuck in this rut and your rut might get deeper. Sometimes you do need to get really deep into your rut. I will say that in order for you to like snap yourself out of it. And I think that's kind of normal as well. And to some extent, I probably got to that point where, yeah, you don't, you almost don't see the incentive or the, the the urgency or the desperation to get yourself moving. But whether you're at that point or you're not, Uh, I hope you're not, but um, chances are you could be if you are deep into this video and you got to this point, then let's leave this video with an action, which is comment that one thing you're going to do. I don't care how big or small it is. Comment that one thing you're going to do. And I'm going to respond to every single person who tells me what that thing is that they're going to do. And maybe we can even build another collection of steps and guides that I'm happy to publish somewhere to help someone else get out of a rut. Because when you climb out of a rut yourself, at least for me, like I feel so compelled and pulled to help others with it. But if I can spread this to more people, then yeah, it feels like something really valuable and impactful to me because I know a lot of people at various points in their life and their career will struggle with a feeling of lostness and demotivation and figuring out what it is they want to do next and feeling misaligned. So yeah, with all of that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, keep at it, do the one thing, and I will see you in my next video.